we seem to be coming through this CME pretty well from what I can tell so far uh, to my knowledge we only had one six pointer so we did pretty good on that note I haven't heard of any real catastrophic things happening right now I couldn't get an answer to myself or anyone about the wind speed um, they were having some problems apparently but apparently you have a little bit of a data breach so what I can say is that by the chart three day chart 23rd 25th the speed looks like on 23rd you went flat line and you pick back up here now you can see where it was at then where it was flat line here about 450 and right here now It looks about like 640, 650, something like that. Well, that's the best I can even guesstimate, estimate on the on the speed of the wind. Okay, let's see. Oop! I'm gonna get rid of that one. Here you can every little gauges, and that's why it doesn't work because they have obviously a data loss or <coughs> breach for the speed and the dynamic pressure, and that's why there's no arrows on there moving. But you can see the magnetic field. We got refreshed. Well, let me show that. You had a G1, and now you have none. You had a a three S3 for radiation storm. Now it's two radio blackouts. None and none. Oh, so by that it it looks uh, you have a minor. It looks like it's lessening. And play that back again you can see it's the same fluctuating but you can't see the speed or the pressure because of what I showed you at least not on here with this So we talk about uh, the protons and whatnot. And proton therapy uh, is used in cancer treatment. Well, it's helpful in certain ways. Apparently, when you can control it and target it, it can be very helpful. But there's another side of that coin, and this is an old article from almost six years ago. And it's talking about the effects of the cosmic proton radiation on a human cell. Because they send people up in space, and in deep space, protons are the most abundant type of a charged particle. And therefore, before the astronauts can safely travel far from Earth for long periods of time, it's important to know how protons affect cells, particularly the cell's DNA. And at the Brookhaven Laboratory, the NASA Space Radiation Lab, 
Scientists have found that protons are more damaging to DNA than previously assumed. And this work is published in the February 06 edition of the journal Radiation Research. Scientists have been assuming that protons damage cells in a way similar to x-rays, but our results indicate that these assumptions have been wrong. The new data show that protons produce more potentially lethal double-strand breaks, a type of severe DNA damage, than other kinds of DNA damages said Betsy Sutherland, who is the Brookhaven biologist. She is the lead researcher. And this means that scientists don't really know how human DNA is affected by the numerous particles in space and, as a result, do not know how to design the proper protection for astronauts. Well, do they not know now? Okay. Maybe they don't. Of the various radiation types, protons like X-rays and gamma rays are classified as low linear energy transfer, meaning they do not lose much energy as they pass through matter. Therefore, scientists have assumed that protons would damage biological systems in the same way as other forms of low LET radiation. But, Sullivan and Hata found that the protons produce a spectrum of damages that is very similar to that of high-energy iron ions and other heavy charged particles. In their study, they investigated the levels and kinds of multiple damages called damage clusters produced by high-energy radiation beams. Damage clusters are dangerous because they're potentially mutagenic and can produce cancers or can be converted to double-strand breaks. The scientists use beams of high energy charged particles and expose DNA in solution to each type of radiation. They then measure the levels of three kinds of damage clusters as well as double strand breaks produced as a result of the exposure. Since these clusters and double strand breaks may have different effects on human cells, it's essential to know how many of each kind are produced by the radiation that a space traveler will encounter. The study shows that we need to reevaluate the effects of protons on biological systems, even the effects of low energy protons. For example, low energy protons are routinely used in cancer tumor therapy, but there has been almost no research done on the effect of protons in tumor cells because everyone assumed that they act similarly to other low LAT radiation types like x-rays. Therefore, this work may help lead to improve cancer therapy. In further research, Sutherland and her group are now extending the research to human cells irradiated with the same beams. And this will help more accurately predict the effects of radiation on human cells and tissue. And the research was funded by the Office of Biomedical and Environmental Research in the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Science, the NASA Biomedical Research and Countermeasures Program, the National Institute of Health, and the National Space Biomedical Institute. Hmm. Well, it's an older article. This research has progressed. It is useful in cancer treatment. But still, um, you know, we talk about proton release and how big the CME and everything was when, when everything jetted out. And then the machinery that it may affect, the satellites it may affect, the power it may affect. But we don't really think about how about the human, the human machine, the body. What does it affect? You know, it's invisible, you can't see it, you can't stop it, you're going to get it no matter what. So, what would it do? What can it do? Well, it's something to think about when you talk about major loads of protons and stuff coming and maybe making it through the atmosphere and, well, being absorbed. No, I didn't know how, if anybody had ever wondered that, you know, what, what would it do to your body? Protons. A whole lot of them. 
And like I said, we'll go into tomorrow looking fairly good. And it's supposed to be tapering off. I don't see that we've blown another one out yet. I think we've done well, Earth. What do you think? Oh, I had one more thing. Yes, I have decided to pose a question to our fearless leader. Maybe I will be one of the lucky few selected to have him answer my question. You know, I, I would have asked him a, a, a much deeper one, but the character limit, would I would have exceeded it. I couldn't have got the question in. So I'm just asking him how come the Democrats who control the House, you, Obama, and the Senate, how come it's been over a thousand days that you haven't had a budget? You know, if you're the old leader, how come you haven't led? And why has your majority, House and Senate, not passed a budget? in over a thousand days. I think we deserve an answer besides blaming it on the other guys, seeing as how they're outnumbered in their votes. So, I hope you can answer this question. I don't think you've truly answered any questions that the people have. And it is our money you're blowing. And it looks like you're blowing it faster than your predecessor. I believe we're 15 trillion in the hole now. I believe we were 9 trillion in the hole when you came along. So without a budget, it looks like you just blow as much as you can as fast as you can. To the contrary, you might deny. So, I pose the question to you. You think he'll answer me? Anybody want to bet a soda on it? I want to bet that he won't. <laughs> oh well. That's what I wanted to say. So, I'll let you all go. Talk to you soon. God bless everyone.